All right, how's it going everyone? I want to kind of talk a little bit about the React profiler and how you could potentially debug performance issues in your React application. Now, this is a really basic example, and I want to say that don't try to fine tune your React application for efficiency until you actually run to issues where your application is slow to load. I think a lot of people get caught up with like the idea of React re-rendering stuff and that's slow, but in all honesty, like code can run pretty quick. You can loop over a lot of items in a short amount of time. So don't get too caught up on like trying to make everything the most performant way you can. Just focus on building out features and come back later if you notice that a page is too slow to load. All right, so down here, if you install the React DevTools, it's just like a Chrome extension. You install it, refresh your page, and if you have React running, it'll basically show these two tabs, Components and Profiler. And what I want to show you is when I click Record here, it's going to start the Profiler and listen to React renders and commits and you can see how long those things take. So if you don't know how React works, basically when you change state in a React component, it's going to render that component and basically render all of its subchildren, unless you're using like a memo or something like that. And for the most part, rendering is pretty quick, right? When I say rendering, I mean, it just goes into the render function of the component, runs the code and that's it. Now, the second part of this whole process, the reconciliation is the commit phase. So that's when it actually looks at the difference between what the shadow DOM in React looks like and what the DOM actually looks like. And it's going to update the DOM in a commit phase. And the reason they do that in React is because actually changing the DOM elements on the page takes a lot of time. So they separate the diffing and rendering and calling your functions in one phase and then the committing is kind of batched up and they do that all in one uh, batch, I guess you could say. Uh, in the DOM. So that was the overview. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this record button here, okay? And I'm gonna click on create item. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click the red record off. So the first thing I wanna kinda show is that when I created a to-do list item, I would expect that only the components here to have re-rendered and done commits, right? But if I look over at the flame chart, you can kinda look at the flame graph. These are just different views of like, what re-rendered and what didn't. I think if it's gray, it means it never actually rendered. But if it isn't gray, then that means it went into that component and it actually tried to call the render function. Okay, so it's gonna call over your, it's gonna call your use state hooks, it's gonna call your uh, use auth hooks, use session hooks, whatever. Um, but again, it doesn't necessarily mean that it actually updated anything in the DOM, which is typically the slow part. So you can kind of get an overview of like how stuff worked out. Um, honestly, I would just look at the ranked to figure out what thing has taken the longest. So at the very top, this thing took the longest, the image. And then the mobile menu buttons took 0.2 milliseconds. I want to also talk about how long is a millisecond, right? I think it takes around like, what, 50 or more milliseconds for you to like notice an actual like delay in the page. So as long as your stuff is like under a certain amount. In fact, if you know anything about game programming, like if you have a thousand milliseconds in a, in a second, and you want to get 30 FPS, which is, I think, the highest the human eye can recognize. That's like 33 milliseconds per render. So you want to make sure that if you want something to not feel sluggish or feel janky, you want to keep it under 33 milliseconds. At least that's just coming from my perspective of like when I used to mess around with making games. So the, the issue here, I want to talk about the issue. We changed something here, but all this header stuff is re-rendering, which is not necessarily what we want. And at this point, I wouldn't probably refactor because like, who cares? Like this thing took like 1.7 milliseconds to do all of its stuff. But if you wanted to kind of tweak this performance, you want to figure out why is the header re-rendering when I, you know, even when I delete an item, let's delete an item and let's see, the header keeps on getting re-rendered. So let's look over at the code and let's find ways to improve this. So if you look at the actual home view here, we have a header and every time that the home view has state changing, um, it's going to basically re-render this entire component. And when I say re-render, I mean it's going to run this function. So anytime you go through here and you were to like update an item, edit an item, delete an item, it's going to re-render this entire thing because at a higher level, this thing depends on state. And the way React works, whenever you change state, it's going to re-render like the whole component. So here's the issue. I have a header that's inside of this component. And if I don't want these things coupled together in terms of like efficiency and performance, you need to either pull this out to a higher level or you can use something like React Memo. So let me show you the memo approach and I'm gonna show you another approach that I'd rather do. So you can, at the top, I could say like a memo header equals react.memo. I'm gonna pass it the header here. And what this is gonna do is React is gonna wrap this component and basically only 
re-render it when the props of this component change. So in this case, we're not passing new props to this component, so it's never going to re-render. So let's go back and make sure I refresh my page, and I want to hopefully demonstrate when I create an item, you should not see the header ever get rendered anymore. Okay, it's only the home view. And I know like the header is going to be highlighted because I have some like Z index issues going on, but notice that there's no navigation, there's no like header buttons in this thing. And it ran, actually it took longer to run this time. I don't know why, but I just want to kind of show you that you can use React Memo to make sure that the header does not re-render. This is kind of a better example where you see again, it only did three things. So that's one approach, use React Memo. Um, there are some issues with this because I think it only does like shallow comparisons. So you have to like pass it. Um, a callback function to check if something is equal. Like this can take a callback function. You can do a custom is equal um, check to compare old props and new props, stuff like that. But an approach I would probably take instead, um, if you have to use the React memo, you might want to think to yourself, maybe this component shouldn't even live here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and cut this component out and I'm going to go back to the main page, which is, I believe, here. And instead, I'm going to go ahead and import this header directly inside the page here. So again, the home cont the home content, that was like where the to-do list items were and like the re-rendering has happened and the deleting the items, but I pulled the header out to a higher state. So now when state changes inside this component, it's not also going to re-render the header. So let's save this, go back, refresh the UI. I want to show you again, if I click start pulling, create an item, and then stop. Again, the header was not re-rendered. So these are just different approaches you can take to kind of speed up your application's performance. Um, but again, I want to, I want to state that, like, don't worry about getting this stuff super performant. This is, you should be able to re-render a lot of components pretty quick in your browser. And if you want to actually check, like, how slow your app is, if you go to the performance tab here and you click on this gear cog, and for CPU, you can do a uh, 6x slowdown. So that'll actually throttle down your CPU to pretend like you're running at, you know, slower hardware. And I would just go through and, like, click on stuff and check to see if like, is there a page slowdown when you have a six times slower CPU? And again, I'm on a M1 Mac, so maybe a six times slowdown doesn't really replicate anything else. You can also check the hardware concurrency and put like one or something. It just to kind of simulate if I was on an older laptop, like how slow is this app gonna load? And for the most part, I mean, it's still working perfectly fine. So these are just little tips and tricks I'm just sharing with you guys if you want to ever kind of do profiling in your React application and understand when stuff might be coming slow, how do you figure out what is slowing it down. Um, anyway, join my Discord if you want to ask me questions directly or get feedback or help from a community of other people trying to learn to you know, program and React and JavaScript. But yeah, other than that, have a good day and happy coding.